Hello and welcome to today's lesson which is multiplying and division of fractions. Now this actually I think is one of the easiest parts of fractions if you remember how to do it. You'd be so amazed how many people make a mistake with this. Now when you're multiplying fractions the only thing you need to do is you multiply the top and multiply the bottom. You do not need to have the denominator the same. Okay? Loads of people think you do, loads of people make mistakes. If you make the denominators the same and then you multiply them, you can simplify it down, but you don't need to do that. So if we have a look at this first one, so let's get this one down in your book. Remember the only way to learn maths is to do it. So example one. So here I've got five over six times by two over three. So if I'm doing this one, it's literally just five times two, which is equal to ten over 6 times by 3, which is equal to, what else, that's going to be 6, 12, 18, over 18. Now this just says it wants it in its simplest form. So what goes into both of these? Well, 2 goes into both of these, so it's going to be 5 over 9, and that's your answer there. Now you could, if you wanted to, you can spot that you can do something which is called cross-cancelling, and this can help quite a lot. So you notice that you can't cancel the 5 and the 6, you can't cancel 2 and the 3. But, before this, you could see that um, you can cancel 6 and 2, so across. So whatever's on the top can cancel on the bottom. To the bottom. So I can cancel that there. That's going to become, well, how many times does 2 go into 6? It goes in 3 times. How many times does 2 go into 2 once? So it's going to be 5 times by 1, which is 5, over 3 times by 3, which is 9. So you could have done it that way, using the cross-cancelling way. Or you can just multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then cancel later. It's up to you. So, that's our first example done. So, let's have a go now at another example. So, this is saying, calculate the follow, giving your answer as a mixed number. The fraction must be a part in its simplest form. So, um, let's get this one down in our books. This is example two. So I've got 8 over 5 times by 5 over 7. So we can um, just multiply the top. 8 times by 5 is equal to 40. 5 times by 7 is equal to 35. We notice that 5 goes into both of these. How many times does 5 go into 40? Well, 5 goes into 40 8 times. How many times does 5 go into 35? 7 times. But it wants it as a mixed number. So how many times does 7 go into 8 and what's left over? Well, 7 goes into 8 once with 1 left over. So it's 7 and 1 7. That's example 2. Again, notice that we could have cross-cancelled here first. So 5 goes into 5 and 5. How many times does 5 go into 5 once? How many times does 5 go into 5 once? 8 times 1 is equal to 8. 1 times 7 is 7. We could have cross-cancelled there again. So, um, now, I've put this one in here because it's just a little slight extension of what we've already done. So, here, example three. So, first of all, what do we notice is different about this? Well, we notice that one of them is a fraction and one of them is a whole number. So, how do I write this whole, this whole number as a fraction? Well, the thing we need to start with this is we write this 8 as 8 over 1. And then you just follow the same process. So, 8 times 1 is 8. 1 times 5 is 5. And because it says write it as a mixed number, how many times does 5 go into 8 and what's left over? So, 5 goes into 8 once with 3 left over. So, 5 and 3 over 5. Brilliant. So, the only difference with that one is that we need to write it as 8 over 1 first of all. I'll probably, if I was doing this in your notes, write it as 8 times by 1 over 5, and then show that you've wrote that as 8 over 1. So, that's that one. So, we will do one more. I'm just going to focus this one on the cross-cancelling part, I think. So, this is example 4. Example 4. So, it's going to be... 3 over 7 
times by 21 over 4. Now, 3 times by 21, we can do that, but we're going to end up with a trickier simplification further down the line. So the thing to do with this is to cross-cancel first. So can anything on the top cancel with anything on the bottom? Well, the 3 can't cancel the 7, the 3 can't cancel the 4, the 21 and the 7, they can cancel. So how, what goes into both of those? 7 goes into both of those. How many times does 7 go into 21? 3 times. How many times does 7 go into 7? Once. So then we just multiply across. So 3 times by 3 is 9. 1 times by 4 is 4. And then it wants it as a mixed number. So how many times does 4 go into 9? Well, 4 goes into 9, 4, 8 twice with 1 left over. So 2 and 1 over 4. Brilliant. And that's that one done. Okay, so we use the cross cancelling first because it makes it easier with this one here. There's your answer to that one. Okay, so um, let's have a look now at dividing fractions. So when we are dividing fractions, we're just going to write a little side title in my notes here because this is now a different topic. So dividing fractions. Divide fractions. So um, with this one here, what we need to be doing is we, um, there are loads of different techniques to do this. Some people make the denominators the same and then they can cancel them. I like to use a technique which is called KFC. I've always used it. I think it's the easiest to remember. Um, and now it doesn't stand for crunchy fried chicken. It stands for keep, flip, change. So KFC, which stands for I'm keeping that first fraction, I'm flipping the um, second fraction, and I'm changing the times to, sorry, other way around, I'm changing the divide to a times. So, let's have a look at this first one. So, this is example, uh, we'll go for example one, because it's a new uh, subsection. So I've got 2 over 3 divided by 4 over 5. So with this one here, so I'm going to use the KFC. Remember, it's not crunchy fried chicken. You're not trying to buy any chicken. So I'm keeping this first one. I'm flipping this to 5 over 4. And I'm changing this divide to a times. And that's it. Remember, we don't need to change the denominators. We don't need to do anything else. So then we can, well, let's see if we can cross cancel. You can just multiply across. Is there anything on the top that cancels with anything on the bottom? Well, 2 doesn't cancel with 3, but the 2 does cancel with the 4. So how many times does 2 cancel? Well, 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 4 twice. Then I'm going to multiply across. So 1 times by 5, which is 5. 3 times by 2, which is 6. So that's going to be 5 over 6. And that's that question done. So write it in its simplest form, 5 over 6. Brilliant. There's the answer. Super. So let's have a go another one of these. You'll notice with this one, I've done one where it's a whole number divided by a fraction. Very similar to what we had before. This one here is example uh, 2 of this section. So 5 divided by 2 over 3. Remember to make sure you're getting all these down there. You know the only way to learn maths is to do it. So step 1, change this whole number to a fraction. So I'm going to write that as 5 over 1 divided by 2 over 3. I'm going to write, um, use KFC, KFC, keep, flip, and change that there. Keep, flip, change. So keep this one, flip this round, and go on. Change it to 3 over 2, so 3 over 2 there, and change that divided by times. So 5 times by 3 is equal to 15. 1 times by 2 is 2. It says it wants it as a mixed number, so how many times does 2 go into 15? Well, 2 goes into 15, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 7 times with one left over, so one half, brilliant. Okay, let's do one more. Now I've, I've added this one just because it's a little bit trickier. This is actually from a past paper question, 
So what is the mean of these? So it's combining two different, two lots of questions. So it's saying here, what is the mean of these? So with the mean, how do I find the mean? Well, to find the mean, I need to add all these together and then divide by the amount that there are. So first of all, this one here is example, example three. Last example before we have a go at some in our book. So it's going to be, so to find the mean, we need to add each of these fractions, and then we can divide by the amount, which is three of them. So it's going to be one over three plus one over four plus one over five. Now I can't add these yet because I need to make sure the denominator is the same. So what does 3, 4, and 5 all go into? So let's start with this one. Well, 4 and 5 would be 20. Well, 3 doesn't go into 20. What goes into 20 and 3? Well, that's going to be 60. So 60 is the one that I need to go into all of these. Now, that is, that is tricky to think about, okay? Um, so what do I need to times this by to get over 60? Well, I'm going to times that by 20, times by 20. What do I need to times this one by to get it over 60? Well, that's going to be times by 40 and 20. So 40 is 10, 20 is two, uh, 5. I'm kind of times that one by, uh, by 15. And this one here, how, what, how to make 5 into 60. I'm going to times that there by 12. That is tricky to think about. That is quite hard. So you've got to make all the denominators the same. So 20 times by 1 is 20. 20 times by 3 is 60 which is the denominator we wanted. So 15 times by 1 is 15. 4 times by 15 is the 60. 12 times by uh, 1 is 12. 12 times by 5 is the 60 again. Now we can add all these together. So 20 plus 15 is 35. So 20 plus 15 is equal to 5, 3, 35. And then 35 plus the 12 is going to be 7, 47. So I end up with 47 over 60. Now that's only half the battle here. Because remember, we're doing multiply and divide fractions. And the way the divide comes in is I've added these together. And now to find the mean, I divide by the amount. So 47 over 60 divided by 3. This is the section that we've been looking at. So I need to write this as 47 over 60 divided by 3 over 1. I'm going to use crunchy fried chicken, KFC, keep flip change. So 47 over 60 times by 1 over 3. So... Does um, 47 go into 3? Well, let's have a little thing. So, 30 is going to be 10. And then I've got 17 left. So, no. There is a quick way to do this. If I do 7 plus, um, 4 plus 7, which is 11, does 3 go into that? If you always add the digits of a number and divide, see if 3 goes into that, then that tells you whether 3 goes into it. Now, 3 doesn't go into 47, so I can't cancel that. So I end up with 47 times by 1, which is 47. 60 times by 3, 60, 120, 180. So 47 over 180. Okay, and that's that question done. Let's check the answer on that. We had answered that one. Well, there we go, yeah, brilliant. 47 over 180. So um, let's have a go at some of these yourself. Now, I've picked questions. Now, all of these questions that I've been using are GCSE past paper questions from NXL, AQA, and OCR. So I'm going to put some questions up now for you to have a go at. All of these are past paper questions. So have a go at these. Pause now and have a go at these yourself. Okay, I'm going to put the answers up for these. So mark these in green. Brilliant. So 
Thank you for watching Multiplying and Dividing Fractions. Make sure you're having a go at these questions because remember the only way to learn maths is to do it and have a lovely day. Thank you.